Welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I am your host, Rosie Acosta, yoga teacher and teacher trainer, mindfulness coach, speaker, and creative writer. I am also the founder of radicallyloved.com, a website where you can go for more information about yoga, mindfulness, meditation, and lifestyle advice. On this podcast, we talk to people within our health and wellness community that are creating content through the ritualistic practice of yoga, meditation, or overall mindful living. We hope to create value in your life so that you can achieve your highest potential and live a radically loved life. To stay in touch with us, just follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Rosie Acosta and on Facebook at Radically Loved Rosie. You can sign up for our newsletter on radicallyloved.com to stay up to date on future workshops, retreats, and latest podcasts. I hope that Radically Loved Radio leaves you feeling inspired to create something powerful. My teacher, Yoga Rupa Raj Stryker, says, if you powerfully believe in the value you have to offer the world, your love and passion for it will be an unstoppable force. Thanks for listening. This podcast is brought to you by our very special sponsor, Ayurveda. So Ayurveda is the sister science to yoga. Ayurveda relies on the intelligence of mother nature and our own body's ability to heal. Most of you know that as a health coach and a nutritionist, I have spent most of my career always trying to find more natural and holistic modalities. I have an autoimmune disease, so this makes it a little bit more challenging, but it's manageable nonetheless so long as my body is in full balance. A couple of weeks ago, I was talking to my dear friend and fellow podcaster, Sahara Rose, and I was telling her I was having all of these issues with my stomach, my digestion, and she recommended this brand called Uveda. So I did my due diligence and I researched them and I found that this company has really created uh, an incredible brand of supplements to support everything that we love about our bodies and our body's natural ability to heal, but also using the tools of Ayurveda. So they use this as their foundation to everything that they do. As with everything, I'm always a bit dubious because I know there's not a one fix all supplement or brand, but I tried it. I used both the joint supplement and the digestion. And I'll tell you, after using it for about a month, I noticed such a huge difference. They are just such an incredible company. And I was able to chat with them and talk to them not only about the high quality of their product, but the high quality of their brand and their company and what they're trying to do. I quickly found that these people are my people. And all we're trying to do is create a ripple effect in the world so that we can continue to impact people's lives and create better health, deeper connections, and just overall healthy living. I'm so excited to not only partner with them, but to have them share a special code for all of the listeners. Go to uveda.com and type in Rosie, that's R-O-S-I-E, at checkout to get a special discount on all of their products. Thanks so much for listening. Hey everyone, how how is everyone out there today? This lovely day, I hope it's lovely. You know what? Every day should be lovely. Uh, I wanted to just take an opportunity to just share a couple of things and to um, share just some tips. I like this sharing tips vibe. Um, I find them to be helpful. It's something that I search for all the time. And so it just makes it fun for me to be able to, to share these with you guys. So I'm grateful that you're listening to this. Um, this year, 2018, uh, 2018, you've been so good to us so far. Um, for the most part, (laughs) I I recently celebrated a birthday and, um, I turned 35 and I have learned so much. I had a nostalgic moment where I was going through, uh, a couple of old pictures. I recently updated my computer. And so I had to do this massive transfer of files. And, you know, since we've had 
all the smartphones and video and, and things, you know, you might capture random moments. I found that I hardly ever go back and, and watch videos, but I had all these videos on my phone and I was on an airplane and I started to go through them and it was so nostalgic for me. It was so sweet um, to be able to go back and look at all this old footage and, um, you know, have some some sweet moments of reminiscing everything that has happened even in the last 10, 13, 14, 15 years. Uh, this year has been a, a little tough in the area of loss. Uh, we've, we've lost some uh, pretty special and dear close people to us and, uh, and also just in our culture, right? I mean, there was uh, the death of Anthony Bourdain and, um, you know, some, some pretty, pretty big people, uh, out in the world. Um, Tori and I recently, uh, had the loss of some, uh, family members and, uh, you know, it's been, it's been tough. Um, you know, one of my best friends also lost his father this year who, you know, I've known since I was a kid and it's, you know, it's been, it's been hard. Loss is never easy. Um, you know, I remember the first time I experienced loss, I was somebody that I knew, you know, I was surrounded by, you know, people getting shot and stabbed when I was young, which was really traumatic, but I didn't actually experience death at first hand until, uh, my freshman year in high school, uh, two of my, my best friends from elementary school, uh, they, they passed away. They were, um, they died, uh, via drowning during the El Nino storm. Um, and so this was kind of my first initial experience with losing somebody that, that I was close with and that I knew. Um, and it's quite surreal. Even after all the years of learning, uh, about loss and grieving, it's it's still hard to lose somebody. I mean, it's hard to lose a pet. Uh, Tori and I lost our first uh, our first our firstborn, <laughs> Benny. He was our sweet little French bulldog. We lost him in uh, twenty, I think it was twenty fourteen. Uh, so it's been about four years, and it's still hard. We were just actually talking about it, and it's it's still uh, really, really challenging for us to even talk about it, but um, even more so when it's somebody close to you. So I just wanted to understand and, you know, go through a couple of the, the grieving stages um, because I thought that maybe it might be helpful for some of you out there listening um, you know, sometimes it's not actual the physical loss of somebody, but sometimes we grieve a relationship that we lost. And and in my opinion, I feel like grief is grief, you know, whether it's a, a divorce or a job or a pet. Um, you know, all these events can be absolutely tragic and traumatic. And so um, I wanted to share a couple of tips. So the first thing I wanted to share was uh, understanding that there are stages of grief. And this is something that I, uh, I learned during, uh, the last handful of years in, in studying, um, psychology and, uh, being on the, the spiritual path. Um, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross developed a five stage system for the process of grief, which everyone I think should read. It's incredible. And, um, she talks about people tending to go through various stages of emotions after loss. The first stage is denial in which a person does not want to believe that the event happened, followed by the second stage, which is anger. The third step is a negotiation process with oneself in which a person offers something in return for the loss to have never happened. The fourth step is depression which is often debilitating, followed by the last stage, which is acceptance that the loss happened. From there, a person can typically move on from the loss, and there's no hard and fast timeline to each stage of grief. There are situations where a person falls back to the previous stage before moving ahead through the grieving process. So being aware of the stages does provide something for your co coping mechanism to process along the way. 
I feel like for me, one of the biggest things that I realized was my recognition of the symptoms. Uh, so there are obviously symptoms of grief, which are mostly emotional symptoms. Uh, since many of the feelings involved are so devastating, there are often physical manifestations. And I, I often talk about how our issues are in our tissues. And there's this roller coaster of feelings that can involve everything from uh, deep sadness and a sense of going crazy or shock or guilt or fear. And a person may even start, you know, doubting their own belief system. You know, it can shake the very core of someone's faith, right? Uh, in terms of physical symptoms associated with this is, you know, being aware of any sort of fatigue or nauseousness or lack of sleep. Sometimes people experience aches and pains or weight gain or weight loss or knowing, um, you know, knowing that these symptoms often manifest in the physical form, I feel like is, is a really great way to be able to diagnose it and treat it right away. I think it's also important to let yourself grieve. I feel like so often we feel like we need to get over things quickly or, you know, there's like a time period, uh, somebody very close to me just recently had, uh, you know, a five day break from work for bereavement. And I'm like, it's, it's great. It's amazing. Right. Any, any time for bereavement is, is nice, but in five days, I mean, I, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like we're just kind of in a different state of mind now where we feel like we have to get over a breakup in a month or two months or a year. And I just feel like we just don't give ourselves enough space and enough time to actually allow for our own grieving process to to take place sometimes we often will compound things we just compound them one after the next or we feel like if we just continue to move forward and forge forward that things will get better and you know i i don't know that that's actually the best thing to do um one last thing that I'll share is to be able to lean on friends and family is a huge factor for moving through grief. Um, I think that family and friends expect us to be upset when we're dealing with something heavy. And oftentimes people don't actually know what to do or what to say because we we have our own discomfort right? So we have our own feeling of like wanting to fix the issue. If we see that somebody's upset, we want to fix. And oftentimes just having somebody there to, to have a little bit of empathy or to just show that they care is enough to have just a little respite from intense feelings of loss. Um, so I think it's important to be able to create a strong support system with family and friends that can help tolerate all types of emotions, especially during difficult times. Um, to me, that's, that's a sign of loyalty and a sign of, of true friendship is when you're going through something difficult and people will stand right by you, you know, walking through the difficult times. So that's it. I hope that this helped in some way. If there's a friend or somebody you know that's dealing with loss or grief, maybe you can share this episode with them if it was helpful. And one thing to remember is that we are all radically loved. The universe works for us and not against us. And it's our right and our dharma, our duty to radically love everything and everyone around us. Thank you so much for listening. Do you want to go on an epic yoga adventure? I do. In fact, I, I, I do all the time. <laughs> when, when do I not want to go on an epic yoga adventure? And this fall, 
in an attempt to see the Northern Lights, we will go to Iceland into a journey through the chakras. It's gonna be fun. If you're curious, you can email me at rosie at radicallyloved.com or go to the show notes and click the links to each of the retreats or you can go to radicallyloved.com. See you soon. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I am so excited to continue to do this. Please share this with your friends. Email us, message us on Instagram at Rosie Acosta or on Twitter at Rosie Acosta. Subscribe on iTunes, write a review. We love doing this. So please help us continue to keep this podcast going. Thanks for listening.